Okay, that's right. That is from Kwame Obroni 1, Obiani in the level. Ebeyeye. Oh, is that not there? Ebeyeye. Ebeyeye. In fact, this music, I love playing it more than 10 times a day. But, uh, Obroni 1, how are you actually able to put the words together, join them to come out like this? Well, I, I, I get inspired from many things. Especially my own life experience. Okay. And I think uh, you might have so many stories to tell uh, or so many experiences to, to share, but you might not know how to compose words, how to put words together. I think that one is rather uh, it's rather a gift. Okay. Yeah. So the fact that you may have experience or you have a message. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean that you know how to convey it. Okay. And if you know how to convey it, well, be thankful. Oh, okay. It's a gift. Okay. It's a gift. Okay. So there is no really a secret for me to you know to join words together or to write lyrics. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I see it as a gift. Oh, okay. Okay. But how do you feel if you are putting the words together or composing the music? How do you actually feel? Sometimes I, I it, it's the same thing that I feel when when I write a story or like a script or something. Okay. I I feel more like not that I'm creating the thing. I feel like as if I were I, I were downloading it from the source. Oh, okay. Because you know sometimes you can be seated comfortably doing something, minding your business, or maybe you just lying down. And then something just pops in. Okay. You didn't call for it. Okay. It just came in. Okay. But when it comes in, you go like, damn, I need this. Okay. And because you you're afraid that you might get lost, okay. you just write it down. Okay. Or if it is music and you okay. can play it a little bit, you, you will just do a quick recording because you don't want that thing to get lost. Oh, okay. It it's not yours. Okay. But if I understand you perfectly, meaning it's not something you write, but it's something that comes out from within. Yeah, though I, I do write, but uh, when when the idea comes or when uh, maybe a certain format or a certain order of words comes, it's uh, I mean inspiration is something that comes. Yes, it comes from within, but it comes from outside. Oh, okay, and. The way our minds will process it is okay. something that okay. it, it's deep. Okay. It's deeper than what we probably can explain. Okay. okay. But uh, since it's uh, talents God has given you, do you actually go to music school to polish it, or it's something you've been doing over and over that makes you become perfect of it? I I never really went to a music school. I I did some basics. Uh, but that was when I was in primary and, and let's say JHS. Okay. Because it was part of, uh, let's say, the, the, the school curriculum. Okay. But that is more like uh, knowing the notes and, and knowing how to, how to read them or even how to compose. Okay. But just the basics. Okay. I, I didn't go to a specific music school okay. where you could actually polish those capabilities. Okay. I never went. Okay. If I may ask. Who is in this music industry? You know, music is not really paying. How do you still cope with the music industry? How do you cope with it? Well, um, I'm a showbiz person. Uh, I, I started with acting. Okay. And currently, I have my own personal project that I'm doing. Okay. So let's say that is my main source of income. Oh, okay media in general because okay. I also work at a radio station okay uh, I do TV stuff okay and music is a project that I'm currently investing in 
Oh, okay. So it's not actually giving me anything at the moment. Okay. But, but you are investing into it. Yeah. So okay. like every project, you okay. invest knowing that you will definitely reap one day. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how soon? I cannot tell. Okay. But in the meantime, I keep pushing. Okay. So um, how do you actually cope with your music career, your acting, and even I believe you direct too? Yeah. With your directing and then radio presenting, how do you actually cope with all these uh, professions? It's a whole lot of things, but uh, it's all about good planning. Okay. Yeah, and it's, it's about... It's all about good planning, like you said. And not being lazy. Okay. Sometimes you just need, you need some rest, okay. uh, you need to relax, you need to do some, some, some silly things, okay. you know, to take off your mind. Okay. But that one too has its time. Okay. Then once you have your break and you're, you're cool with it, you get back to work. Okay. Okay. But in the music industry, who is your role model? Do you have any role model? In the music, uh, not really. Uh, I have my preferences. Okay. Uh, but there are things that I like about. Uh, some big time musicians. Okay. But none of them is my is my role model. But there are things that I appreciate about that. Oh, okay. But um, if I may ask, if I may ask, what is your target concerning the whole music as a whole? Talking about your fans, what's your target? Uh, one to spread messages keep on spreading and seeing people uh, benefiting from those messages okay and I think one of the most beautiful things that uh, uh, a singer or a musician can ever dream about is to be on stage sing and all of a sudden you stop singing and you listen to the public okay. singing along your song without missing even a comma okay that's the best recognition and probably I think the most satisfying okay. uh, result that you can have out of your music. Okay. It, it means that your music has gone into people's mind, down into people's heart, okay. and they can sing it back to back. Okay. That's the best that I think I, I, I would love to have. So what actually inspires you or motivates you when it comes to music? Uh, life. Life in general, I I come from uh, a very uh, let's say let's say poor environment. I don't like that word, but uh, well, I, I come from the lowest level that everyone can think of. Okay. And people don't that's, see that's me. That's a white man. You see, so people don't see me coming from from the ghetto. Yes, uh, but we do have ghettos. Uh, this is very strange. It's very strange. I mean, listen to Akon. Akon is though he's a Senegalese, but he's yeah. a U.S.-based, sure. and he sings about ghetto. Oh yeah. In the ghetto, sure. and he, he talks about ghetto in the U.S., not oh, in Africa. Sure. You see, and there are lots of other, let's say, ghetto <laughs> artists okay. out there in okay. the West, in the Western world, okay. that they sing about that environment because okay. it exists. It's real. Okay. And that's where I come from. <laughs> Yeah, so that is what inspires me. So I identify a lot okay. with the ghetto life locally. Oh, okay. There is not, not so much difference, trust me. Okay. I know with our perception when you are a white man, we know that definitely things are good. There is nothing like ghetto lifestyle or whatsoever. Yeah, that is, that is a perception that it needs to change, but it will take a very long time. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, common things about being in, uh, let's say, a ghetto-like environment is, you know, struggling to, let's say, a day by day. Okay. You go outside, you hustle to get something. Uh, you hustle to pay your bills. Okay. Uh, the criminal life around. Uh, what people do just to make some money. Okay. And if you listen to the to the hip hop music, the trap music okay. in the West, that's what they talk about. Okay. Because that thing exists over there even before landing to Africa. Okay. Because 
if there is ghetto here, let, let's say the truth, okay. it's an it's a Western influence. <laughs> they, they, they use, they, they, there wasn't a, any ghetto before the West came to colonize and blah, 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 and then the rest is history. Okay. So it's just a created or formulated word, if I understand yeah, it, your point. It came into existence as okay. a result of foreign influence. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's okay. a bad situation okay. though, okay. but it came to existence okay. as a result of foreign influence. Okay. Okay. It's so native. Your last word to... Your, your fans? Uh, keep following me, keep appreciating me. You will not always like me, or you may not always like what I do and my words, but even when you don't, try to get the sense or the message behind or why I'm doing a certain thing or why I'm saying certain words and, and why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it. And, Keep following me, and thanks to everyone. Okay, that is Obloni One. Am I right? Yeah. That is Obloni One. So, viewers, thanks so much for your time. My name is Christian Adiabo. You can call me Savist. So, hope to see you again. Thanks. Oh.